Hey everyone, my name's Tanner. I'm here with Thrust Flight in Addison, Texas, and today we're going to talk about three reasons to abort a takeoff. All right, so there's obviously more than these three reasons that you would want to potentially abort a takeoff, but these are the three we're going to talk about today. These are the three that here at Thrust we have identified and put on our checklists because we feel they're some of the most common and maybe the most important reasons to abort a takeoff. So the first one here is going to be fires and failures. And, and you might be saying, oh, that's kind of cheating. That's, you know, there's an and in there that's two for one, right? But they really both do fall under the same category. So obviously if we have an engine failure in a single engine airplane, we're going to abort the takeoff whether we want to or not. We're not going anywhere else, right? That engine stopped moving. And so now we need to stop the airplane. Fires, uh, the engine could continue to turn and we could also have a fire maybe in the cabin, maybe an electrical fire, maybe a wing fire, something like that. But those are absolute aborts. We want to make sure that, you know, at that point, the airplane is no longer capable of safe flight. There's uh, obviously not a whole lot of thought I need to put in, into that. If my engine is having trouble or uh, I catch on fire in some point, I want to stop that airplane, shut it down and evacuate. Maybe even just stop the airplane and evacuate, depending on how serious the situation is. All right, the second one is going to be red enunciators. Now, not every plane has an enunciator panel or any kind of enunciator system. So for the archers, we have the G1000 we use here, and we have a crew alerting system or our CAS messenger, and then our messages panel at the bottom of our PFD. And both of those together work to make our enunciators in coordination with our engine instruments on our, on our MFD. So if there's red messages in our CAS message, or if there's a red enunciator going off on our EIS, on our engine indicating systems, I'm immediately going to stop. I'm not going to try to troubleshoot. I'm not going to determine if that's an instrument error versus a real error. I'm on the ground. I don't want to take any risk and go up into the air. I just want to stop and then see if anything happens, you know, that makes the situation worse and then decide if I want to go back and try to take off again or if the aircraft needs to go to maintenance. And so again, it's going to be our cast messenger for our crew alerting system. It's going to be our EIS for our engine instrument system or our engine indicating system, as well as any red X's that we might get on our PFD for our flight instruments, such as an ADHARS or an ADC failure. All right, and the last one we want to talk about is loss of directional control. This will probably be the largest one, the most common one that we see outside of all these other essentially maintenance or luck induced ones. This one can be called caused by the pilot more than anything else. And so we want to be careful that any loss of directional control we abort. We don't try to save it. We don't try to, you know, slam the airplane back on center line using a ton of rudder. We don't want to be fishtailing all over the runway. We just want to stop. Obviously something isn't right either with the airplane, with our mental state, with maybe the winds or the weather could be outside of our personal minimums. But whatever the reason is, we don't have control of the aircraft on the ground. How could we possibly expect to have control of the aircraft in the air. So again, at that point, we want to make sure to stop the aircraft and then determine if we're safe for another attempt or if we just want to go back to the ramp. So let's talk a little bit about the process to actually abort the takeoff. The first thing I'm going to do is say it out loud. I don't care if I'm in that plane by myself. I want to kind of shock myself out of any area that I might be in mentally of uh, making sure that I understand that I have now made this conscious decision to stop the airplane, to not take off, and then we'll worry about troubleshooting after that. So I'm going to say abort or abort, 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 right? I, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull the power all the way back to idle. I'm going to just break normally, right? Unless I'm coming up on the end of the runway or there's something else that needs to be done that I need to get off of the runway sooner or I need to stop that plane extraordinarily quickly, I'm not gonna do anything different than I normally would on a landing roll, right? I'm just going to pull that power to idle and then I'm gonna use my aerodynamic braking by pulling back on the stick and I'm gonna put a, a decent amount of brake pressure on, but again, unless there's a, a severe emergency that's happening right then, I'm not going to necessarily slam on the brakes. That can lock up the brakes, especially on these smaller aircraft without ABS, without any of the brake um, kind of augmentation systems that a larger plane might have, and it could make the problem worse. Again, if I just get a, you know, an Atahars failure or something, that's just a flight instrument. I don't want to go flying with that, certainly, but it's not going to affect my performance on the ground. I can just get off normally, get clear of the runway so that they can keep using the runway so that other planes don't hit me while I'm on those uh, critical areas, and then I can troubleshoot from there. And again, it's get off the runway, safety's number one, and then 
from there you can go back and troubleshoot and see what the problem is. So again, it's going to be abort, abort, abort. I'm going to pull the power all the way back. I'm gonna get on the brakes. I'm gonna exit as I normally would and then determine the next steps from there. All right, y'all, that wraps it up today for our three reasons to abort a takeoff. If you can think of any other reasons to abort a takeoff, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.